You know, the recent India-Pakistan standoff, uh, Professor Klein, uh, was the first time South Asia, for example, saw uh, drone warfare. Right until then, uh, most religious, I think, in India and maybe even Pakistan had been thinking of land-based um, wars. The only question used to be how how deep will you go into the other territory, etc. But this time, um, India and Pakistan clearly saw drones uh, being used very actively. Uh, and what had been observed in Ukraine suddenly hit home in uh, South Asia as well. But one of the key things that um, uh, some of the other guests who have had earlier on that particular standoff also mentioned, the role of GPS jamming. Right? If you need to do precision strikes, a key component of it is the GPS piece. The GPS piece, as you mentioned, is owned uh, or at least governed by let's say the US, uh, US Space Force, as you referred to earlier, had helped develop it. Um, how, how should policymakers and military planners be thinking about this, right? Does everyone need to build out um, similar capabilities in case tomorrow they are denied GPS or if their GPS gets jammed? I think India was concerned that China might come in, uh, help Pakistan, for example, jam uh, some of its capabilities. How do you expect that to pan out for countries, let's say, like uh, India? So the GPS jamming, uh, that's could be it's it's an important consideration. So in Ukraine, we're seeing GPS jamming on both sides, and you mentioned the importance uh, between India and Pakistan too. So jamming, uh, laser attacks. Jamming in general of communication signals, that's been going on on a daily basis in some form for years. So it's almost part of our, and even cyber attacks is, is going on for years. So what's the so what there? Countries, militaries need to plan uh, an exercise towards a GPS jam, uh, denied environment. U.S., we do that already. All right. So we have exercises sometimes where we turn off all the GPS or we go through and do some uh uh, jamming of GPS signals. But this is, you know, I'm, I'm an old naval flyer, okay? So I was flying before there was GPS. You can still do your mission, okay? You can use inertial navigation. I think what you're seeing for the drones is you're doing optical uh, type of stuff, or I think even reporting, I think uh, some some uh, wire guided type of thing uh, used in Ukraine. So you can do different types of terminal guidance. It doesn't just have to be GPS. There's a whole variety of things, inertial line of sight, Dead reckoning uh, depends on you know laser designation is a, is another option. So I think we'll just go back to those backup methods. The GPS uh, is easy. It doesn't have to just be the U.S. system. It could be Galileo, GLONASS, Beidou on China, QZSS uh, on Japan side. So some folks were saying, hey, you can use any timing signal for position navigation and timing. You just need four satellites and a timing signal. You could use commercial entities that all have timing signals too. So maybe it's using backups to some of the more high-end position navigation timing constellations for these other ways to accomplish your mission.